You can't just steal my saying. <laughs> because here, here's the dichotomy in it. <laughs> limiting beliefs lead to mm. limiting behaviors. Tell me You're what women... you me to go back like 20 years. Uh... 20 minutes. <laughs> if I don't think that men can cry and you cry, gross. What am I supposed to do now? But, I crown uh... the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> do not interrupt me or I'm going to karate chop you. You Ugh. could choose to not cry. Can I say welcome to the show? Go ahead. Hello and welcome to the net. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. And my name is Seth. And today we are talking about how gender roles can sometimes hurt our relationships. Mm. But before we do that, let's read the review of the day. That's right. Okay, here we go. Favorite marriage podcast, five stars. Then this is from Hannah O'Connor. Thank you, Miss O'Connor. Or Mrs. One of the best marriage podcasts out there. I've listened to this from the beginning and convinced my husband to as well. Thank you. This podcast itself is really well done, and I love how candid and real it is. Yes, it is real. You know why? Because if we're doing anything that's not real, then it's not worth it. We are idiots. <laughs> that's right. And this uh, show is also brought to you by MarriageSupply.com. Hold on. Thank you for your review. And if you haven't rated and reviewed the show yet and you want or and you like the show, mm -hmm. please go to iTunes and rate and review the show. That's now right. Now we it can matters. tell you that the show. Yes. Today's show, as always, is brought to you by MarriageSupply.com. Go check it out. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. We're not disappointed in what we got from there. <laughs> Golly. Oh, All right. right. Here so, we go. Um, I wanted to talk about how gender roles can hurt our relationships mm -hmm. and potential relationships from a very long back and forth conversation that I've been having with mm -hmm. Richard, Richard, we will call him. Right. So the thing that was brought up in the conversation between Richard and myself mm -hmm. was this idea that, um, so he comes from a religious background mm -hmm. and it made me think about our own church experience at Mars Hill right. and how the church, and this doesn't apply only to the church, but it's just really prevalent but it's cultural as well, mm -hmm. that we are fed through media and our church communities and school and stuff like that, what women and men are supposed to be like, what mm -hmm. boys and girls are supposed to be like. What box what, they should fit in. Mm -hmm. And when they vary from that, then it's sometimes even considered sinful or wrong. Mm -hmm. Sure. But right. I think what the problem with that um, is that limiting beliefs actually leads to limiting behaviors, mm. right? So if I say this, the the sentence to you, women are supposed to be, mm -hmm. what comes into your head? Just say the first things come to your head. Well, honestly, the first thing that came to my head now, well, like no, the, no, 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 the headspace that we're in now, because time is contextual, is anything they want to be. Well, thanks for not helping. It, I'm not an oppressive dictator. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> it was funny. Okay, so yeah, traditional gender roles. Women are supposed to stay home. What else? Women are supposed to have babies. What else? Women are supposed to not work. Mm -hmm. Women are supposed to get married. They're supposed to have kids. They're supposed to cook supper when the husband comes home. Women are not supposed to... Uh, oh not fall out of regular gender norms. <laughs> what? Thanks. Why is that funny? It's like the least women are not uh let me think of it this way. Women should not uh, you didn't give me any setup for this at I'm all. Not, so that's I don't the know. point. I'm okay. not I don't want you to have a setup. Uh, okay, so I used to think very differently but don't, given I don't care. family of origin and culture. I know. Right? So tell me how you used to think. Women should. I, I told you. St uh, stay at home. They should not make a big deal. They should wear makeup. They should fix their hair. They should wear dresses. They should, uh, I mean, if they want to. Um, don't. Oh, it. Don't go into that. Tell me You're what asking women. asking me to go back like 20 years. Uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Women should never. Uh, this is I, I'm having a hard time thinking of stuff obviously <laughs> oh. <laughs> women should not laugh loud <laughs> I'm just kidding 
Come on. Women should not. Okay, I'll ask you. Women should not what? Um, swear. Okay, women should not what else? Women should not not shave their legs. I can't. Mm-hmm. Women should shave their legs. Right. Women should smell like perfume. Women right. should wear jewelry. Women should get their nails done. Men should uh, make money. More money. Support their household. Uh, work hard. Not be a baby. Not cry about stuff. Just tough it out. Mm-hmm. Right. They should not show very much emotion they should be stoic they should be leaders okay they should be fighters men can't cry can't whine can't uh not be responsible men should not well i have this view right now you should not wear pajamas to any grocery store at any hour of the day or i instantly lose respect for you sorry i have lots of friends who do that just fyi so Uh, i don't lose respect for you i have no out group (laughs) you have no out group jerk don't <laughs> every time you raise your arm i'm gonna tickle it um men should uh let's see women or men are supposed to can you think of other ones uh be smart be competent um, know what to do mm-hmm. they should lead they should have the answers they should be responsible for their family they should be strong and uh, well i already said that they should know stuff right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so I thank you for participating in my impromptu game. I I want you to do this with yourself and your partner or Mm -hmm. your dating person or whatever. Um, Your dating person. I don't know. (laughs) Boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't know. Uh, I think it's helpful to reveal in yourself and in your significant other, if Mm -hmm. you have one, what things are limiting beliefs about the other gender that you not necessarily to, but you believe that or but that you kind of think right away you're talking about what are your biases yes what are your given biases what are your implicit and explicit mm-hmm. biases and i've taken a couple of these tests which i you would absolutely love this. I don't know why I didn't share it with you. You Sorry. didn't send me to um, school for a master's degree. I was a woman. I was supposed to stay home with kids. <laughs> I don't send you anywhere <laughs> except to the. I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> uh, I believe it's um, Harvard. One of the schools there at Harvard had these free tests that you can take that point out your implicit and explicit biases. A lot of them are about race and culture and gender and different stereotypes that, you know, we can think, oh, we're, you know, we're woke or whatever to a certain level. But then we take these these uh, these tests, which are, I mean, it's Harvard. So mostly everybody respects Harvard. So they know what they're talking about. And they point out, and, and I, I took one on something and I thought, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this, you know. But the test was set up, all these, you know, validity measures and stuff like that mm-hmm. to really expose what you really think. And it was really interesting. And you're like, what? I, that, okay, that's, that's really how I think. Mm-hmm. So that becomes food for thought on how you actually think. So what you're talking about yeah. is your, your biases related to marriage, yeah. gender, culture, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. again, I'm going to say it again, that limiting beliefs lead to limiting behaviors. Yeah. Because if Was you... that your term? Because that's a great term. Yeah. I just wrote it down. I just made it up. You're so smart. <laughs> but uh, why I think this is really important and mm-hmm. why I keep saying limiting beliefs lead to limiting behaviors is that in this back and forth with Richard that we've been talking about, he's mm-hmm. talking about the dating scene of Christian Church the Christian culture. space, right? Mm-hmm. Church culture. And he was using these references of like, you know, he, he felt like he couldn't talk to girls in a certain way because it would hurt their feelings or mm-hmm. it was whatever. And, and what it kind of revealed in me was the church really is in some ways teaching women to just be these fragile pieces of crap. Mm. Like I can't handle my own emotions. Someone's supposed to do it for me. God is this father figure. So I'm his princess, whatever the crap that talk it. And if I mean, that's right. fine if it feels good to you. Sure. But in my mind, mm. that type of um, like, it's the opposite of empowerment. It's disempowerment. It's like, oh, she's this baby. You can't don't say something negative to her. She's a right. beautiful baby. They like can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. And all it is, is that phase that like, um, what is it that Dr. Corey Allen talked about that chemical 
um, uh, phenylethylamine. Yeah, the like phenylethylamine mm-hmm. phase is going to go away and your husband's going to turn back into a real person mm-hmm. and he's going to say some stuff that's going to make you feel like the worst pile of crap and mm. because you haven't been taught to deal with emotions and right. feelings and crass comments you, and rudeness mm-hmm. and whatever you're going to be destroyed right <laughs> like, so let's talk about this let's get real in our own in the early days of our marriage mm-hmm. right and you you did not grow up in this church culture that you're talking about however mm-hmm. i think there was a switch for you and then like everything that i said or my friends did would just like destroy you and we would stay up for like four hours and be like i don't know what uh, well I, i'm but sorry what it, i guess yeah. because I'm and new. there was a couple different things there is uh-huh. one i had the church when i became a christian mm-hmm. saying your partner your spouse your boyfriend is supposed to like mediate all your feelings the man is the head the man does this if right. if you like so what i was seeing was you're gonna let toby call me that and you're not gonna do anything about it well mm-hmm. i can't do anything about it because i'm a woman oh yeah i'm not empowered to do something right. about it I so can, you wanted me to step up and yeah. in essence be responsible for your feelings mm-hmm. mitigate any uh, uh, tension that uh-huh. you had between wh- whoever it was and whatever they said mm-hmm. and then just figure it out. Yeah, right? and do something about it, do right? Because right? my discomfort couldn't be just discomfort. I wasn't, I'm not supposed to have feel discomfort. Right. I'm a pr- daughter of the king. Oh my gosh. Don't get mad. That's the culture. I'm the daughter of the king. I am beloved and beautiful you're gonna toby. make me cynical well, i'm already <laughs> i want cynical. you to do this <laughs> <laughs> shut up <I'm, laughs> you're gonna knight me <laughs> Tuesday, yeah i'll crown you but i uh, crown the idiot <laughs> <laughs> but think about that right My, like i was literally taught you you daughter of the king are not allowed to feel discomfort and if a man is doing it and he's your boyfriend it's his fault right so it's teaching women to not be I mean, it's teaching women to be completely disempowered to their own feelings, mm-hmm. dealing with comfort dis- or dealing with discomfort, um, dealing with conflict. And then it's teaching men to parent their spouses, right. not partner with yeah. their spouses. Mm-hmm. It's teaching men that, well, I need to make sure that she's babied and protected. And no mm-hmm. one says, you can't say her earrings don't match her dress. What are you thinking? You don't right. talk to women that way. And that is kind of, and we've talked about this on other podcasts, the concept of a wife mothering their husband and like anything that is like a sexual turnoff there can be nothing more mm-hmm. than that like no i don't this will be sound weird i am not going to sleep with my son mm-hmm. right so but that that flips that whole idea on its its ear it's mm-hmm. like i'm responsible for this and and this is weird too so as a therapist i've counseled a lot of young men um you know, teenagers getting their first girlfriend or whatever, 18, 19, 20 for their first long-term relationships. And the the boys, <clears throat> the young men, often feel like, oh, well, yeah, we're together now, me and this, this uh, girl. I have to teach her about money. I have to teach her about, oh, well, yeah. you know, here's the real world and here's how you, you know, take a bus from here to here and you got to watch out for this and stuff. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa what um who or where did you pick up this notion that you're responsible for that Mm -hmm. you can give advice and say hey i might have more experience you know taking the 209 into seattle from here to there and here's this will be helpful but as far as like well this is how you manage money yeah and and you do this and blah 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 and this it wasn't even in like the christian culture really and in the on the whole stupid christian culture it's even a thousand times worse and when we got married 14 years ago i thought a lot like that so it's like a mixture of uh, western culture of american culture gender differences and then you plop on that all the crap from christian culture that we get it's i i really felt like <laughs> you had you had a car remember your first car yes and it was an awesome car it was yes. a, i don't know what year it was it was a volkswagen it was a 90 vr6 and Jetta. it was like fast as heck like a vr6 six cylinder he did leather seats sunroof i loved speed. that car i don't think it was a turbo or anything but like okay v-dubs are breakdown machines right 
and uh, I'm like a Japanese car guy or whatever because they last forever. So I was like, okay, yeah, when we get married, um, we're going to sell your car. And, and so gonna, we did. And we did. So that was me feeling, don't roll your eyes. It's you're so like, frustrating. You're like this much mad, and but you're trying to put on a show. I can tell you differently and you'll still think what you think. <laughs> um, anyway... Uh, yeah, I, I definitely fell into that trap early on and then realized like, what am I, what is this? This is yes. stupid. People are responsible for themselves. Yeah. And, and I think in general, I didn't, th- I hadn't thought of this till just now that, mm-hmm. um, boys are taught from a really early age to self-actualize and just mm-hmm. like chase after their dreams and be really daring and bold and whatever. Right. And girls are sort of taught like to dream but then that's about it. It's like you don't actually have to do any of the things you dream because eventually you'll just be a mom, mm. right? And the image that keeps coming to my head is that the the that sort of church culture, like um, daughter of the king, I'm just this fragile whatever. It's like a cocoon. I think of it like this. Mm. Like a, think, imagine a cocoon with a butterfly all wrapped inside of it, mm-hmm. right? And the part, the boyfriend or the spouse is like, dusting off the cocoon and taking care of the cocoon don't look at it wrong don't say the wrong things and eventually and this is like a long process for women but eventually you stop being in a cocoon and you get wings right but usually when you're about 30 Mm -hmm. and you open your wings and you're like i haven't needed you for a real long time Mm. my cocoon is not even here anymore and then you're like you turn into beyonce you turn well no beyonce's rad you turn into someone mean Mm -hmm. beyonce's not mean she only has the best of intentions at heart. <laughs> but I think it's right. important to mm-hmm. think to see it like there is a, a time when women realize they've been lied to for a really long you, time. Okay. Do you think that it is the same way? Because this is not how we raise our daughter. And I don't think that any of our friends raise their daughters in that way. I mean, I make this a point like daily to tell Hattie, like, because I don't know, Hattie's in love with me, basically, which I think is just beautiful. I tell Hattie... I say, you are the, I whisper in her ear. Well, I did it yesterday. You are the strongest girl I know. And she's like, what about mom? I'm like, her too, but you, <laughs> you are extra strong and you are extra special. And then I say, you are so, you know, smart in these things. And mm-hmm. then I also say, you know what? You are so beautiful. Well, what about mom? She's beautiful. Yeah, she is, but you're my favorite beautiful you know just mm-hmm. stuff like, and she's just like bleh, melting yeah. you know kind of thing but i want to pair it because what you're saying i don't think that we are raising our daughter to be that way you mean the old way the first way yeah because you're saying like yeah. oh yeah you know women in a cocoon blah, blah blah that i know that still happens clearly but do you think that we currently and our friend group currently are raising people like that I don't know because we don't do, I think, what a lot of our friend group does. We don't go to church. Right. We're not in a church. It's mm-hmm. not because we don't want to be in one, but the church yes, is, it is. Mm, the church is in around us, as, uh, although they are great. A lot of that They're really, daughters of the king church. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of that really gendered construct is there. Like mm-hmm. all the girls wear pretty sparkly dresses on Easter and that's fine to do. But what if you don't want to do that? Mm-hmm. And now everyone else is looking at you like, you're really weird. Right. Like you wore black on Easter. Like that's weird. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a whole culture of that, that the more we put our kids and ourselves into spaces that aren't sort of eyes open to this thing, uh-huh. the, the worse it is just they're going to soak that stuff in. Yeah. It's going to be a sort of a byproduct of being in proximity. Right. Yeah. And so, but we've been talking a lot about women mm-hmm. and I want to talk about men because mm. This, this does tend to, the, this conversation tends to go to the women's side of things because women have been treated so poorly for so long mm-hmm. and that that has its space for sure. And I'm feminist and all of that stuff. Right. But I think it's very important that we focus a very clear and specific time on the man side of it because men are told that they aren't, you are not supposed to cry. You're not supposed to be this and mm-hmm. that. And you have a very sub narrow window of, of mm-hmm. behaviors and mm-hmm. attitudes that are right. acceptable mm-hmm. by culture and when even, you're even as culture grows and leans towards uh, a change of women's roles and responsibility mm-hmm. i think sometimes the men's culture doesn't because mm-hmm. here here's the dichotomy in <laughs> <laughs> that was comedy <laughs> Dico- that sounds like dichotomy grits <laughs> how many grits? how many grits <laughs> um uh well, dang it what was i saying in I, yeah, I think a lot of the stuff around uh, women's 
issues and stuff are, are shifting in our culture while some of the old patriarchal kind of gender norms are remaining the same yep. for men. And the dichotomy is women want uh, feeling emotive, soft, sensual men, right? And then when the men do that, old old patterns in women from acculturation, etc., say, wait a minute, what kind of man are you, yeah. right? In times like, I know that I've felt that, like I have felt the lowest, and I think we even talked about this in a, in a, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago podcast, like the times that I cry, which are, I don't know, not a couple times a year or mm-hmm. whatever, but it's like crying and then like I feel the absolute stupidest I could ever feel like because if I'm crying in front of you what are you thinking like I'm not a man suck it up what that's what you're thinking I'm that's thinking. that's what that's I'm not what that's I'm what thinking. I'm thinking and you don't really say like okay this is odd you know this is weird <laughs> I don't, you don't not you don't, just don't really say I never have ever <laughs> said that <laughs> she just stares at me and goes Ew. I'm not judging you right now, but uh, you could choose to not cry. <laughs> definitely don't want to sleep with you right now. <laughs> uh, no. And I think what you're getting at too, like when, okay. When we have a culture, especially in church that tells women that they're the daughter of the King and they're this precious gemstone. Every time you say that I cringe by the way. Okay. Like literally. But when that's, when that's the culture, It makes men, it it doesn't just impact the women. It makes men go, oh, I'm supposed to treat her this way. Right. This is the thing I'm supposed to do. And I can't say these words and I can't whatever. Mm -hmm. And so if we could just sweep all that off the table, Mm -hmm. like gone. Right. And start over. Mm -hmm. Because a, a byproduct, hold on, because a byproduct of that is I don't know how to treat you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what not to say. Are you going to get your feelings hurt? Do you want to be treated this way? Yeah. So let me tell you this. How many, okay, think of that like, what what age group of people do you think use that sort of daughter of the king language oh. predominantly? Think, just answer. Just, just answer. Don't say that. Answer. 16 to 28. 28? Yeah. So do you often think that when women have been married for seven to ten years they use that verbiage no are you kidding (laughs) yeah they realize oh like that was that's not like a grown-up thing and i'm and i don't want people to feel bad who believe and think and feel that way right not what i'm getting at at all but there is a that's a it's like a time in your life where you're so precious and held and you can be precious and held and because you want that because that is important so i'm not devaluing that like being sounds um, like it no no like being seen, heard, and loved, and this is because uh, I just, one of our awesome friends and teammates, Rhea, just made this mug, Like, and this isn't verbatim, but being seen, heard, and loved, and, and accepted, known. and mm-hmm. known are like the five most important things that any of us could have, right? Mm-hmm. So if we have somebody in our life that is making us feel that way, whether it's like God or your dad or your mom or your spouse or whoever, then that is absolutely important. So Mm -hmm. I'm not cynical about that. Like the times when I feel like actually known by you Mm -hmm. is just when we are like, I I feel like, (laughs) what do I feel like? Just like, just vapor, like just pulling together. And Mm -hmm. like, we are absolutely like this, there's not a better feeling, right? So I'm not discounting that at all. I think the church... I don't know, like superimposes these ideas and kind of really superficially just creates these Mm -hmm. weird constructs that aren't real. But let me think about it like this. Like, let's think about it like this. So if you are that girl, that young woman who is like, just, you know, I'm this and I'm whatever. And again, it is like a total cultural thing that we are being taught. Right. When you're that person and then you get a boyfriend or whatever, you're in a relationship with a human who's, a human and they're complex and they have whatever uh-huh. you are you are literally like creating a false world around yourself it's like an egg like oh. you've created a false narrative and that's what i did walking into our relationship because i became a christian do not interrupt me or i'm gonna karate chop you so i'm a son of the king you can't the, watch me so then <laughs> uh so you have this like delicate eggshell around you mm. and then the first time something goes wrong you go well fall apart 
I mean, I'm the daughter of the king. How could you, how could you, you lied to me? Mm. And all it does is it's like a barrier of false absolutely false hopes for everything mm-hmm. so it sets up it sets you up to think dating is going to be different mm-hmm. it sets you up to think marriage is going to be different than well, it actually yeah. is kidding? motherhood's going to be different friendships are going to be different mm-hmm. it sets it's like the ultimate blinders to real life right and so it's but it's built on this gender construct of mm-hmm. you're the daughter of the king a precious gem and men you're supposed to be like a workhorse mm. knight you save the day you kick ass you don't ever right. cry uh-huh. it you lead you blah. that's what you thought of me early on because remember like back in season one you talked about i could just lay this stuff onto my yeah, husband you don't have feelings and men don't it. have feelings men right. don't cry so why would you imagine cry? imagine the inner like just conflict that i was having like culture like oh pff, uh i'm not gonna cuss but um oh dang it oh darn it Oh, gosh dang. Yeah. Uh, Melanie is putting all the stuff on me. This is too much, but I'm supposed to be strong. And I'm blah, supposed blah. to just take it. Yeah. Right. And take it. And one thing I thought about when you were thinking, okay, yeah, imagine the disappointment when some lady or girl is thinking this way. Oh, it's supposed to be this way. It's, it's likened to the falsehoods and incongruencies and just out of reality thinking that pornography might be for young boys. Oh, that's a, right? yeah, that's She's a good always ready. Oh yeah, she, blah, 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 all this stuff, mm-hmm. and I can just use this and do that. You, you, you see what yeah. I'm saying? So there, I think there's a lot of similarities in that, mm-hmm. although they're very different. No, I However, think it's the, similar. The false thinking and then the real letdown, especially after you get married, because like men, you know, it's like, oh, we're married. It's like we'll have sex anytime, right? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, I think right. uh, that analogy is really, I think that's a really good and close analogy because mm-hmm. it's just like a hugely misleading world mm-hmm. that it's being created and expectation. Right. And it's definitely shattered within the first two years of people's relationships or before they even get married, mm-hmm. both on the sex side and on the um, like gender norms. Like he's supposed to treat me like I'm a goddess all the time. Right. Like, right. You know, baby lamb forever. And it doesn't work that way. Um, and a lamus, a lamus, a lammy. Um, and I, but I want to really talk about and invite the, like if, again, like I was saying earlier, if we could just wipe everything off the table and start mm-hmm. from zero, mm-hmm the way that I would want to approach it is you're, you're trying to come into a relationship with another human being. They mm-hmm. have their own family of origin. Yes. They have their own culture that they grew up in. They have their own expectations for what they want their life to look like. Mm-hmm. The things they want to do as a job and their hobbies are not your hobbies. And the, and, and none of that stuff is dicta- should be dictated by their gender. You sh- I shouldn't look at a, man i've never met and be like he only wants to be an astronaut or a firefighter he may want to be a painter he may be a professional tap dancer why would i limit what i believe right it it shouldn't be but going against those gender constructs those social constructs and cultural constructs is really 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 crazy unless you're willing to do the work unless you're willing to be self-aware and dive into that and i would say just from seeing a bunch of couples i would say because i know for us you know, we, we clearly had our own bias, implicit and explicit bias. Uh, oh, well, I'll work. I'll go to school. You're, you'll cook supper or whatever. Who knows what? The, the traditional gender roles. But then after probably, man, if I'm okay, I'm going to be really honest. Maybe after six or seven years, we came to a point that was like, no, you're not good at that. I'm better at that. Let me do it. Uh, you do your thing. I'll do my thing kind of thing. And then whatever works for both of us and our family, we do. We could be, you know, completely androgynous or asexual, right? It doesn't matter. It's just like, mm-hmm. I'm better at this. Mm-hmm. I'm stronger so I can, I don't know. Or I want to do this. Or I want to do this or I prefer mm-hmm. to do this, right? honor the differences promote the linkages Mm -hmm. shoot gender a bird it doesn't matter it it doesn't matter where it doesn't need to matter don't don't let because again limiting beliefs lead to Mm. limiting behaviors if i don't think that men can cry and you cry gross what am i supposed to do now what am i supposed to do with the fact that you have now broken my belief you gotta work through that but uh, no i'm gonna put that onto you as a this is bad yeah you shouldn't though yeah i know yeah so i'm saying (laughs) 
same thing as if uh, you thought that women aren't supposed to be good at math or women mm-hmm. can't be accountants or, or weed eating. Yeah, I don't know. There's a million things. And so I, I would say look at. So, yeah, like you were saying, like try to drop mm-hmm. these social construct things that we've been taught and sold. Social constructs and church constructs. Uh, okay. So try to drop them and approach this new relationship or your current relationship with just totally new Mm -hmm. eyes for that person Mm -hmm. built on what they actually are, Mm. what they actually like, how they think, how they feel, how they behave, what they bring to the world that's good, Mm -hmm. whatever. Can I say something? Yeah. Why what you just said is so important because in uh dr john gottman talks about attunement it's throwing out what you think it should be Mm -hmm. and actually looking your partner in the eye and go okay i'm listening to you i am attuned Mm -hmm. to you you're saying that you like to weed eat but i've grown up to think oh well no women don't do yard work blah 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 and other bull crap Mm -hmm. i'm attuned to you and say that's a great idea. I would love to see mm-hmm. you do that, right? So guess what? If you increase your attunement, you increase your uh, reflective listening skills, mm-hmm. and then guess what? Then you're closer to your partner. Mm-hmm. So you've thrown out some weird gender construct, you've rewritten the narrative, and you and then you've, you, you've unwritten a narrative, and then you rewrite the narrative that works for you and your spouse. So if it works for you two guys, but it doesn't work culturally or doesn't work churchily or whatever, that that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. If it works for you guys, then make that work. And that will actually draw you closer together. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I thought when you were saying that is too that because we're taught like in culture and church and stuff that we're supposed to behave a certain way, we try mm-hmm. really hard to do that Ugh. until it doesn't work. Right. And that's, like I said, sometimes that's before you even get married that you realize it doesn't work. But right. you actually don't realize that you're still following a path mm-hmm. that is you're ne- you are not going to stay on right right like the way that you and I treated one another when we first got married was not sustainable by any stretch but it was 1000% built on the foundation of what we were taught mm-hmm. from our church mm-hmm. right men are supposed to do this women are supposed to do this so we were like okay we're just going to like white knuckle how we're supposed to be and it's going to work right and it only like it's like holding on to a like when you do wakeboarding and you hold on to the thing and it pulls you down if you oh, haven't yeah. done right, you know, yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. and you just like barrel yep. and into then the eventually water. Eventually, you can't breathe. And yeah, you, and you're just, you're just you're, being drug underwater stuck, right? behind right. the boat. So uh, again, like in in couples counseling and stuff, I was like, you know, we usually try to do what works and we do what works until it doesn't. Yeah. Or this other idea: the problem isn't a problem until it is yeah. right and i love those two sayings because they are the absolute most simple thing like one plus one equals two the, the simplicity of that can be really beneficial when you apply it to a marriage mm-hmm. like if it's not working for you and i but we're trying to continue this facade or whatever because of something out here culturally or whatever mm-hmm. then let's let's try to change that but so sadly and oftentimes and we're both guilty of this we go, oh, but we're just going to make it work yeah. b- between you and I because we, we think we should or we, we feel we'll be judged or whatever because of, of stupid reasons. But I'd much rather be closer to you mm-hmm. than I would like try to impress neighbors or, you know, other yeah, friends into in, the different, social standard. in different communities. Yeah. Right? yeah because Cause at the end of the day, what matters more? Yeah. This us. relationship, right? And mm-hmm. we always tell our kids, what do we tell our kids? What matters most? Relationships. That's right. Mm-hmm. You act like you came up with that. I came up with it. You just steal my. You can't just steal my saying. <laughs> that wasn't a problem until it was a problem. Just right now. Um, we're one, so anything that you say, I say. I'm just kidding. Don't. That's investment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's investment. Yeah, no. That's um. That's all kinds but of stuff. I don't know. I really wanted to open up this conversation, uh-huh. and I think really let people be complexly who they are. And mm-hmm. I, but I do want to have sort of one caveat there. This is not a like. Uh, get past jail free card for being an a-hole and i i'm no. only saying that because mm-hmm. i think some people think well i'm just gonna be myself i love to shoot birds and look at porn and i don't give a crap about anybody like those are damaging behaviors that hurt people please don't do that You're just and, like shooting birds and clicking through them. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but i just think it's important to throw that out there because i know people are going to try to take this and abuse it right please don't do that mm-hmm. um 
And if you're in a relation, like if you're in the early stages of relationship, considering dating someone or whatever, it's that is sort of the crucial time where this stuff is kind of the like false glue of the first part of your relationship. Right. And relationships go in phases, but you can probably yeah. get out of that phase a whole heck of a lot faster with a whole heck of a lot less damage. Mm -hmm. If you can identify what gender constructs or like gender expectations do I have of this person mm -hmm. from the society, from church, from culture, from my family of origin right. that actually don't apply and are probably harmful. Yeah. What things can I like, weed out and eliminate yeah totally and, and you can look up implicit and explicit biases on i don't know if you just google those keywords plus harvard we'll you, get a link we'll find yeah we thing. can we can find a link that's that's just an interesting thing there's tons of them that you can do and as we wrap up today's show mm -hmm. we want to say thank you for everyone who has rated and reviewed the podcast please go ahead and do that if you haven't done it yet it helps us out immensely helps yeah, people it, find the show it's free it takes two minutes please do that as a favor to us yeah and then on top of that uh, also, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash anatomy of marriage mm -hmm. and uh, financially supporting the show and the only reason that we're asking you to do that is this is free therapy for lots of couples it's a, a lot of yeah. hard work on our part but if we can get financial backing we can push it to the next level right we can start doing events we can start having merch we can start um getting just really cranking up our um production and all of those things yeah and that all just, kinds that of just stuff. takes we, some money so we only want to see this expand and grow mm -hmm. So please consider patreon.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. And lastly, as we said at the top of the show, this show is sponsored by marriagesupply.com. Can you just say a couple of words about marriagesupply.com? Marriagesupply.com is the website that we are partnering with. They mm -hmm. have um, like sex enhancement type things for couples, but mm -hmm. it's all porn free. None of it is like inappropriate. There's nothing yucky on the site. So right. if you visit marriagesupply.com, you're not going to see something that's like, ah! didn't want to see that yeah right but and um so it's all respectful tasteful well done yeah. so yeah so check out marriage supply.com and thank you again for wait a minute you're thanking me because you well yeah you're cool and you're cool too but thank you so much <laughs> for uh hanging out with us today and we will see y'all later all right peace thanks Bye.